a Vermont cop decided it was a good idea to go and kick a person while they were handcuffed inside of a facility. Here's a video. The man you just saw who committed criminal assault is their boss. He's their captain. He's their supervisor. He's the person that is in charge of them. He's the individual who sets the tone and the culture. Let's put up this picture we have of Franklin County Sheriff who's on the left. His name is Roger Langevin and on the right, that is Captain John Grismore. He is no longer employed at that agency. Grismore had been on administrative leave following the incident earlier this month. Patrol deputies who witnessed the incident did in fact report the captain to the sheriff. And now it is currently under investigation by the state police, the state of Vermont. The sheriff said in a statement and I quote, I am proud of our deputies actions and integrity in coming forward. The actions of Captain Grismore do not reflect the values and high standards of conduct and performance that I expect from my staff each and every day. I'm gonna give you some insight as to what led up to the to the assault. But before I do that, let me remind everyone that once again, even though the sheriff is saying the right thing and the deputies did the right thing by adhering to their mandate to report, uh, nobody has arrested the captain. What we saw was clear criminal assault. The captain should have been arrested that same day. Hell, he should have been arrested by the deputies that witnessed him do so. But because of the chain of command and because of this, let's say hypocritical dynamic connected to law enforcement that somehow those who are administrating law enforcement cannot somehow be accountable to it, is the reality we're living in. So here's what led to the assault. The video of the incident was provided by the county sheriff's office, the Franklin County Sheriff's Office. It shows the suspect handcuffed, shackled to a bench before falling down and hitting his face. After two deputies tried to help the man into a sitting position, the suspect attempts to gain or stand again. And Captain Grismore enters the frame, kicks the man in the crotch and then abdomen after area several times. The captain in another dynamic of irony is running unopposed for sheriff. So that same captain has political ambitions. He's running unopposed for the GOP nomination for the Franklin County Sheriff's Office. The current sheriff was backing him because the current sheriff is moving on. The current sheriff now says he will no longer support his captain for that particular office. Now, I'm not sure if this actually changes anything because the captain is running unopposed. I did some research in this and you know why he's running unopposed? Because the sheriff currently is so popular in the GOP that nobody decided to run against who the sheriff endorsed. And so now I have a question, here's my question. Did you not know that your captain behaves in this way? Is this really abnormal? Was this a one off, a rare mistake? He got hot headed for one moment or is it sheriff that everybody is aware of how this captain operates? That everybody has seen this captain violate the rights of others and it was okay until it went viral. NBC5 reached out to the Secretary of State's office to learn if there had been any updates regarding Grismore's candidacy. The department said that his role is limited to ensuring that candidates meet the statutory requirements to be placed on the ballot. The office does not have the power to remove a candidate's name from the ballot without a court order. 
So Captain Grismore's actions had previously caused both the Democrat and Republican candidates for Franklin County State's Attorney to call for his resignation. All right, it's caught on camera. Wheels of justice are moving slow. This guy should be arrested for the assault he committed. Remember, just because someone is temporarily incarcerated does not mean they temporarily shed their humanity. They should still be treated with the same level of decency and respect as anybody else. And they have constitutional rights, such as the right of due process. They cannot be punished just because a cop doesn't like them. It's taking away their right of due process. If you want to deprive someone of life, liberty, or even property, they must go through the process of due process. All right, dear brother, what are your thoughts on this? I want to start off by saying when I first heard about this story, it said Franklin County. And I was afraid that it was our police department again here where I was grew up and where I currently live. It's Franklin County, Vermont, not Franklin County, Ohio. So right. there's that. I want to also say, so the suspect had his arms, his hands behind his back, cuffed behind his back. And he was covered by two law enforcement officers who can A, restrain him if something happens and B, if they were unable to deescalate him. But C, if he became combative, what was he gonna do? They're wearing personal protective equipment and they have weapons. This was unnecessary for him to step in. And if he's a supervisor managing the situation and he thought that they would fail in doing any of the three things that this name, de-escalating him, restraining him, or just dealing with the combat, then what are we doing? And so as you alluded to earlier, Dr. Ritchie, I was hoping watching this video that they would turn around and arrest him immediately. But I guess the chain of command doesn't work like that when it comes to law enforcement officers. Yeah, and it should, and it can, it legally can. There's no legal prohibition to arresting a commanding officer, none at all. All right, 